feeling a little sick? Oh yeah, but it's okay. The Beyblade will stop spinning once it bursts, right? Right? Oh, will it? Ah! Why did I let you shrink me down? Hi, I'm Dr. Bay, and this is basically science. I love science because it's in everything we do. Eating, breathing, walking, and even blading. That's right, there's a science to Beyblade. Let me show you. Carry the 100. Oh. Welcome to the lab, Bay fans. This is basically science, and I'm Dr. Bay. Or am I Dr. Doppelganger? Nah, I'm Dr. Bay. Not a real doctor, just somebody lucky enough to get trapped in a lab and not know where the exit is. Today, we're gonna take a close look at inertia. Uh, no, not that close. Inertia. First off, what is it? Basically, inertia is a property of objects. It means they keep doing what they're already doing. And that means that an object can't stop or start or change directions without something else acting upon it first. When Dr. Doppelganger and I were sitting on that Beyblade before, we kept moving even though the Beyblade burst. And that's because even though the Beyblade burst and came apart, it kept doing what it was already doing, spinning. It had inertia. We all do. There's plenty of inertia to go around. So objects keep doing what they're already doing. I mean, I could encourage my Beyblade like really hard. You can do it! Woo! Please! But without anything acting upon it, it's not going to start spinning spontaneously. Likewise, once my Beyblade is spinning, it's not going to just stop either. Well, until something makes it. So, what might make our Beyblade stop? What does it make our Beyblade stop? Friction, less aerodynamics, high fluid density, loss of angular momentum from getting hit by opponents, other Beyblade tops. All of these things act on our Beyblade, interrupt its spinning inertia, and stops them from doing what they're already doing. Without them, our Beyblade might spin forever. Okay, you say, but if inertia can just be stopped by anything we've learned about in previous episodes, then like, does it even exist? I guess we'll have to prove inertia. <laughs> Hello? Yeah? Clear my schedule. No, not that. No. Oh no, that's too important. Okay. I guess we'll have to do this in five to ten minutes. How do we prove inertia? Well, I've got some ideas. Here we have two water bottles. One filled with water and one empty. When we spin them both really fast, they'll keep spinning until something stops them. Like my hand. The empty bottle stops spinning completely and I'm not at all surprised. But when the bottle filled with water stopped, the water kept moving. That's because we stopped the bottle and not the water, and so the water's inertia kept it doing what it was already doing, and you could see it moving inside. Three, two, one, let it sip. <sighs> now, I love hydration as much as the next mad scientist, but let's get to blading already. So, we know our Beyblade tops stop spinning eventually, I mean, Nothing lasts forever, except for my immortal toads. But what about starting? Remember, inertia says 
that objects will keep on doing what they're already doing, and that includes just lying around. So a Mirage Fafnir F6 should keep on doing what it's already doing, unless something were to act upon them. <laughs> <laughs> Our first Mirage Fafnir F6 will have nothing acting upon it. Our second Mirage Fafnir F6 will be acted upon by a Sword Valtriac V5. Our first Mirage Fafnir F6 should keep on doing what it's already doing. But let's turn that should into prud. I mean, proof. Three, two, one. Let it sit. I'll launch a Sword Valtriac V5 into our second stadium to act upon our second Mirage Fafnir F6. Two, one, let it rip! Our second Mirage Fafnir F6 is starting to move as it's hit by the Sword Valtriac V5. It took a few tries, but with enough hits, it can even start spinning. Without being hit, it would have just kept lying there. Like our first Mirage Fafnir F6 which never started moving, never. I actually built a time machine and went to the end of the universe and it was still just sitting there. Wild. Speaking of Fafnir, we have a bonus round. Another face of inertia is the slow-mo burst. How's that related to inertia? I'll show you. First, what is it? When an anti-clockwise spinning Beyblade slows down and receives an attack from a clockwise spinning opponent, it can sometimes burst that opponent. Hold on, how does that work? When a clockwise spinning Beyblade collides with a slower anti-clockwise spinning Beyblade, their layers make contact. The layer stays stationary since it's being acted upon by the anti-clockwise spinning Beyblade. But, the disc and tip keep doing what they're already doing. They keep spinning. The Beyblade unwinds and it bursts. It's just like that old saying, slow and steady wins the Bay battle. So what did we learn today? We learned that encouragement is powerful, but not enough to overcome inertia. We also learned that inertia is a property of objects and it describes the fact that they keep doing what they're already doing. An object can't stop or start or change direction without being acted upon by something else first. That something else could be friction or less aerodynamics or losing angular momentum from being hit by another Beyblade. Or a portal to another dimension, I guess. I mean, anything could happen in a Bay battle. You've all been amazing lab partners. That's all the basically science we have for now. So, if you're gonna keep doing anything, keep staying safe, keep being good, and keep on letting it rip. This episode's gonna keep on doing what it's already doing until somebody acts upon it. There's so much inertia, it's gonna just keep on going until somebody acts upon it and stops it. So, does, does anybody wanna stop this episode? And anyone? <laughs>